Hello. Hello, we are from the band Ashen Cycle and this is our story. We met in 2018. We were pretty much friends from the beginning. We had a lot of things in common. The music being a big one for us. I did dabble into a little bit of guitar playing and drumming before, but nothing serious. But once we met, this was uh, something that we really got into big time. In the past, I started playing guitar when I was like 18, but I haven't really touched it and I met this guy like 10 years later. I think the first interaction just going towards music was him helping me with a guitar setup. <laughs> yes. On my old ass Ibanez. I guess the band formed in 2019. Yeah, it took a while because yeah. it took us a, almost a year until we actually had the guts to gather up and yeah. actually try to do something. One of our other colleagues had a rehearsal place. So we were like, okay, just, just go and have some fun. We didn't really have any plans to like write songs or anything of the sort. We just wanted to have some fun. We met Roland at the Jam Space 2. He started on bass, but quickly kind of switched to uh, guitar. Because he's the best lead player. He basically. has the best solos out of uh, all of us. What made us want to make an album? To me, at least, it, it felt kind of natural. We ended up just writing riffs either at home or during uh, our jam sessions, basically. And those riffs became songs. We were practicing the first song that we wrote. I just said, hey, should we make an album in a stupid tone and stupid kind of way? <laughs> we didn't take it seriously at the time, but yeah. it was kind of the, the spark that we needed. We didn't really care about what genre we should play. Is this prog? Is this metal? We didn't really care. We just wrote something that for us sounded cool. That was kind of a big objective when we got into this a little more serious. We really wanted to make music that we would listen to in our own uh, free time. We all gathered uh, here in my living room. Yes. <laughs> we called them workshops. We gave feedback on all of our ideas. The main point was to have the structure of the song. Mm -hmm. Which basically translated into us going through the song and picking it apart, mm -hmm. looking if we could improve a certain section or a riff, or maybe the solo wasn't good, or maybe we needed more. We don't have any like, expensive gear, amps, guitars, mics, and basically everything else is pretty much uh, on a budget. We didn't really see the point to, to invest like thousands upon thousands of euros and money yeah, and, and I dollars. Think, to... I think you don't really need to. The technology right now is really, really good and you don't really need to invest that much to actually make good sounding music. You mentioned amps. Uh, we do have amps, but we didn't use, use them, them on the album. <laughs> We just used uh, plugins. In terms of drums, like we said earlier, we recorded everything in a living room. I live in, a, in an apartment, so uh, recording drums, live drums, wasn't an option. At the jam space, we do have a drum set there, but that room isn't equipped to... We can't really record drums. Yeah, you... We don't have a setup yeah. for it. So we used plugins. Yeah, that might be controversial for some people, but that's what we had and we didn't want to block ourselves in, in exactly. not making the album because we don't have a exactly. space to... Especially since uh, for us to, to get to that point, I think it would require a lot of investment and a lot of time as well, which we... Yeah, yeah. which we didn't, we didn't have. The investment that we would have needed, it's not only a lot of money, but a lot of time, which we, we really don't have since we have a day job as well. And I think that's something that a lot of people struggle with. We just wanted to make the songs uh, with whatever means necessary. And I think that mentality kind of goes across everything that we did. We always try to make everything ourselves. If we don't have a specific type of gear, okay, what's the next option? Maybe it's something that's just like Chico mentioned, it's not something that's uh, approved of, but again, our main objective was to just have fun and to put the album out there. Like I said, a lot of uh, a lot of people think this is, uh, this is controversial. I get it. I am the drummer of the band, so <laughs> <laughs> replacing me with, uh, with plugins 
well, it is what it is. But yeah. I was also the producer of the band, so I just wanted to make the songs. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a technical problem or anything. We can play the songs. It's fine. These were just the options that we had on hand. In terms of the DAW that we used, we used uh, Cakewalk by BandLab. It's it's recording as we speak. <laughs> on the lyrics side, which is... <laughs> <laughs> it was a slog. Yes. <laughs> we're having the most trouble writing lyrics. It's easier for us to just come up with riffs. Melodies and stuff, yeah. <laughs> we're proud of what we actually wrote, uh, but it took us quite a while. Forever! What a bay! On the vocals, I uh, recorded some proto takes at home, just using the mic at my desk. Size take the consequence of your innocence. I sent the tracks over to Mr. Chiku here. We ran some tests. I think we kept some of them, and the other ones we just basically tracked here. If anybody's a producer out there, you're probably going a little bit crazy right now. You <laughs> use the different mic in a different room, it's gonna sound different. Yes, it. It does sound a little different, but it's not that. It's not that big deal. I guess it's time to go into each of the songs, talk a bit about each of them. The intro, uh, it's called uh, Beginnings. That started as uh, an actual song. The main riff of it came into my head when I was coming back from work. It started as uh, a big song, an actual song, but when we got uh, through the workshop, we thought that this is probably going to be a lot better if we keep it short mm -hmm. and keep it as the as the intro to to the album because it sets it the mood sets the mood uh, and kind of prepares you for for the next song Break the line. Next one is Break the Lie. The song started with the with the chorus riff, which just going through my usual practice routine. What kind of popped into my head was the syncopated and rhythmic kind of beat. I recorded it, sent it to the guys. It sounded pretty interesting. And then this kind of led to the melody that you can hear over top. We basically added harmonies and a bunch of other stuff. I think that was the first bass solo. As far as the lyrics go, the main message of it is to basically follow your own path and not go astray into, I don't know, believing what you could hear on the social media or whatever other thing that you feel doesn't fit you and or your beliefs. You can see a lot of people getting uh, cancelled pretty much on, on social mm, media mm. because of stuff they said five or six or ten years ago. We kind of wanted to go against that because it's just not fair. Yes, you can say stupid shit uh, on the internet, but uh, I don't think ruining your career for a stupid thing you said the one time yeah. uh, that shouldn't happen in this day and age and it seems like it's happening a lot. Next one is Fight to Survive. Fight to Survive. That's a song I wrote entirely. It started from a riff that I had in, in my mind for a few days at that point, and it kind of evolved into what it is today. When it comes to, to the lyrics of it, I, I think I wrote the base of the, of the message. It was most of it, yeah. Together, I think we only ended up switching, like changing a couple of Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had, we just just a few little things that needed uh, tweaking mm -hmm. but the overall message was uh, already there it seems like I'm at my best in writing lyrics whenever I'm alone the way I got to the message was to try and put myself in a difficult situation that happened in in the past I guess the main message of the the song is no matter through what awful things you're going through there's always going to be somebody out there to help you out. Don't be afraid to reach out to people. The song in itself, the theme of it maybe is a little dark, but we try to put a positive spin on it. I'm opening my eyes, I'm not saying goodbye. Yeah. This is the point where the person in, in the song that we're talking about in the song uh, 
uh, actually realizes that uh, they have something to live for. Right, right. All right, right. <laughs> a riot was an interesting one. It's one of the songs that evolved uh, throughout like numerous months, uh, just uh, by us jamming in the in the rehearsal space. It started with the riff that you can hear at the start of it. We basically used it as a, as a way to warm up. Some difficulty with the tracking. But that was fun regardless. From my perspective, Roland made one of the best solos on the album on this track. It's just Killer. We just added another one that I made during one of our workshops. I think it's the the easiest one to follow, but it had this energy that we really we really liked, which kind of lended itself to to the lyrics and its message. I guess it's a bit of a middle finger to the current status of our society. It's basically an exercise in frustration for the most part. Okay, next one is uh, Legacy of the Forgotten. This is another song that I wrote. I think this is the same as with uh, Fight, mm -hmm. where I, where I yeah. tracked all the parts myself. This song gives these guys uh, a little bit of a hard time <laughs> because there's a really fast riff. Yeah, in the second half, it just goes insane. And there's a lot of, you have to have a lot of stamina <laughs> to keep it up. <laughs> I guess this kind of ties a little bit into the previous song too. It talks about uh, stuff not being the way that it should. Basically learning from our past mistakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On this one I think we used uh, the tracks, the vocal tracks from... From my home, yeah, from yeah, the one yeah. I tried. Yeah. I kind of took this one to a personal level, I guess. And I think it's one of the other indicative messages and tones on the entire album as well. Because yeah. the main motif of the album kind of goes in this direction as well. And yeah, I was specifically angry on this one. Uh, there's other ones as well, but I, I really felt this one. I felt the, li the lyrics. And like I said in the past, this was specifically one of the, one of the songs that really spoke to me. Witnesses. It was one of my riffs. I think it's one of the simpler songs on the album. It's simple in terms of structure, but yeah. the way we get to the chorus is like... Really dubious. Really yes. Stupid in a way. Yeah. <laughs> I came up with a riff, I sent it to the guys, and the next step was to figure out how the song is going to evolve. Due to the, the, the rhythm of the song, because it's... Da -da 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 -da. The 
message, lyrically speaking, kind of went into how we see war, basically. That main riff is pretty much like a machine gun. From that, we came with the idea that let's talk about war and how bad it is. Looking back, we had the song before. The war in Ukraine story. Yeah. As we went along with it and the, the war started. Started in, back in uh, February of last year, yeah. It was surreal in a way. And this one we have uh, three mm. solos pretty much. With a uh, four harmonized melody at the end, basically yeah, yeah. with a fourth and one. Section. Each of us each of us has his own solo on it. Yeah. And it, it feels <laughs> in a way like a collab. It really uh, brought in a lot of life into the song, just made it work a lot more better. On the vocal side, again, uh, just like I mentioned with Legacy, uh, this is another one that I really felt really pushed and got actually got angry during the during the recording. I really felt the the message in the song. Next one, Sea of Forgiveness, another yeah. one of Chiku's hot takes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this this is just a, an instrumental song. I can't remember uh, what got me into that mood of having clean sounding guitars and no uh, distortion and uh, aggressive riffs. I think it fits well within the album. Mm -hmm. uh, in the point where we left it. I went for a sad, melancholic kind of mood. At the end, I couldn't uh, help myself and just had to use a bunch <laughs> of whammy bar. <laughs> Usually, if you hear a pinch harmonic and a solo, it's Chiku's yeah, solo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> One of the main reasons I really like it is besides the solo sections which you went nuts on is the uh, the production value it has. Chiku just continued to add various layers to it yeah. until yeah, yeah, it yeah. kind of got to the point it is right now. We got to a point where it was too much on it. Yeah, we had that as well. Cellos and mm -hmm. uh, bass and I even added drums at some point but it just didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> 